Hello everybody and welcome to another Nail Talk Live e-workshop on your Wednesday evening. And today it's May 1st, so originally I thought of asking Cheryl to join me this evening to do a workshop about the seduction line of manicuring and pedicuring products within the Magnetic Nail Design range. Unfortunately, this morning I received a text message from Cheryl that she's not well, she has a flu, so she wanted to come, but I told her, no, let's not risk anything, stay at home, get well, sending a lot of love to you. But Deborah was in the office to do a couple of reels together with uh, Syriza, so I jumped to Deborah and I asked Deborah, Deborah, can you help me out this evening? And perhaps we can repeat the Shape It e-workshop of last Monday, but now in English and with a different Shape It and a different nail. And she said, yeah, sure, but we, had a, we needed a model, so we asked Maria, and Maria was available. So tonight we have an e-workshop about the new magnetic Shape It, available from today. But there's more that we will cover this evening. Of course, the challenge of Jessica of two weeks ago, we will have the winners of that challenge and the beautiful work that they made for their homework. We also have another Derma talk with Wendy Fink, and this is about the bone structure in the hand. So she's going to enlighten us about the different bones and, and the whole structure of the hand. Of course, we have more because uh, Syriza, Henriette and Jessica visited our distributor in Switzerland, Dobie, together with Gillian last weekend. And Gillian made a beautiful behind-the-scenes movie. And we will show you this evening how that event, which was marvelous and amazing, how it went in Switzerland and what they all did. So we have a lot of ground to cover. I also have some new Magnetic Nail Design products that I would like to introduce to you if you haven't seen them yet on the socials yet because we actually launched them today and the distributors and the ambassadors already had them for some weeks so we have a busy show a lot to do not a lot of time let's get started And it seems like perhaps Deborah is our star of the Shape It. Well, it looks like that. And Deborah has a lot of experience with extreme nail shapes. And that's why she really loves working with the Shape It. But of course, we also have other Shape It queens in the Netherlands. We have Silvana. We have, of course, Luella. And we also have Demi. And also Brenda. And we will introduce those trainers to you with the Shape It in the next months in the various e-workshops. Anyhow, tonight... An, um, an, an additional, an extra show that wasn't planned, but still we are ex very excited to do it. And Deborah, you are my guest. What will we make today? Hello, good evening everyone. And today is uh, the English one. Uh, last Monday was the Dutch one. Yes, and now I'm here again. We're going to make today the modern square with the shape it. So it's a little different than last Monday because then I uh, have made the modern almond shape with a lot of inlay. It's going to be also with inlay, but a little less products in there. But really, it's going to be very cool. Yeah, and we already saw last Monday, and perhaps you also joined last Monday, how easy it is to work with the shape it, but it is very important to maintain your own signature in the nails that you create. Well, to find that perfect balance between ease of application, perfection in the end result, and your signature, we have s different ways of working with the shape it, and tonight we have a very cool design, but on a somewhat challenging nail, I think, Deborah. That's true, uh, because uh, Maria, my dear colleague from the office, has a little downwards growing nail. And I'm going to work on their index finger, which is going a little bit downwards. So it's a little bit, well, measuring, uh, because the shape it is like going in a straight way. But we're going to create a perfect shape nail on this little bit difficult finger. But it will be really cool. Let's have a look at the nail that you're referring yes. to. Yes. Yes. Oh, there's a little tape on my glove, I can see. One moment, please. Like this. As you can see, I'm going to see it from the side, if we can. Mm. Maybe a little bit to here. Something is a little bit off. Well, I would turn it around so you can see it already. Yeah. As you can see. It has a high apex and exactly. then a downward curve. Yes, it is. 
So this is really going to be a little bit of a challenge with the shape it form, because normally we have to place it a little bit like upwards, but then it doesn't fit her nail. So we have to go uh, pull it a bit to the downwards position, but it will be a really great nail. So we're yeah. going to do it. And then you can see that shape it can be done on every nail you want. So uh, with a little bit of extra technique and a little bit of playing with the technique with the shape it's, you can see the shape it can fit on every nail you want. Okay, so let's, um, you're not going to push the shape it straight to the cuticle. You're keeping it a little bit in front of the cuticle so that you're able to adjust the nail shape a little bit. Am I right? That's absolutely true. Yes, I'm going to keep it a little bit, a um, little bit over half, over the half of the nail, and that's where the place will be where I'm going to put it on the nail. So before that part, I will add some extra, like glitter or flakes. You can add everything you want, but because of the shape, I don't want to be uh, it put it straight away in the whole line. So I have to put it like a bit to the half, a little bit over the center, but not completely to the to the a cuticle, because then that nail will go up and this nail cannot go up because her own nail is going downwards. And then the gap underneath will be extremely wide, so that's really not what we want. There will be too oh. much uh, open air there, so that, but no, that's or not nice. Or, of course, or sometimes you see people just putting a lot of power gel or a similar product in a, in a tip and applying it on the nail without keeping in mind the natural nail. And then it becomes very thick, very bulky, and actually quite hideous in a way. So we're just going to um, correct the upper arch a little bit on the nail of Maria by not placing it straight to the cuticle, but staying a little bit away from it. That also answers perhaps the question Gemma asked, that in order to get a high apex, if you push the shape it to the cuticle, then the shape it has to fit the natural nail relatively perfectly. But perhaps, Gemma, I will explain to you when I see you in Soestberg uh, one of these days. So you're going to first, of course, uh, size the shape it. Yes, I will do that. And I already told you which shape I'm going to use. This will be of a modern square nail, uh, and it is this one. I will open it up for you. You can see all these nice tips in here. Put it down because I already took three. And what I want to show you is from a little bit too small to a little bit too wide. Because it's important that you go a little bit wider than the nail is. Because, of course, you have to add some product in the shape it. So if you go too small, you can't fit it on the nail anymore. But you don't want to go too wide because then your product will access out of your shape it. So it will run down onto the cuticle area or on the finger. So that will be... A dangerous thing, so we are not going to do that. So let me show you what I already have put down on the table. So I have like three shape it sizes right here, and I will start with the <coughs> number three, which is a beautiful small size. And uh, in the normal old way, when we would place tips, it would be great, it would be amazing. But the thing is, I need to fill it up, of course. And there's also going to be some product right here. So where I'm going to place my form is right here. And But there needs to be product. So if I'm going to work with product, it will be right here. And as you can see, when I put it right there with product, it will be way too small. So it won't fit anymore. So this one will be going to the side. Then I have a quite bigger one. This is two steps, two steps bigger. It's the first. And if I fit it like this, well, as you can see, yeah, it totally covers the yes, side walls. Yes, it completely goes over the nail. But also, when I am going to fill it up, and I will place it right here, it still goes really into her cuticle area. Can we see top shot, please? Yeah, here we can also see that if you apply this on the area where you will apply it in the next step, the nail is way too bulky, way too wide. Yeah. This is just ridiculous. Yes, ridiculous. <laughs> and massive. So that will be uh, like uh, you're building a small nail, really wide. So we're not going to do it. So I have the number two of this uh, shape. And if I put it on the nail like this, it's already looking great, a little bit wide. But when I'm going to fill it up, and I put it a little bit like this, uh, where are you? <laughs> uh, give me top shot, Gil, if you want. 
uh, then if I fill, there in, fill it in with product, you can see it fits perfectly. It's really going great into the sidewalls and not running into the sidewalls. So it really fits in a good way. Also, I can even do it like this if I want. But of course, her nail is going down in the front, so I'm not preparing this nail from the cuticle area, but I'm preparing this nail from the half of the nail. Because I want to have the shape in a normal way, with uh, as, well, as thin as I can, with less product as possible, but still very strong. So that's what we're going to do right now. So this shape is the good shape for her. For now it looks too, too big, but of course it needs to be filled with some products. Yeah, so it's important to realize that between the surface of the shape it, or the inside of the shape it, and the surface of the natural nail, there needs to be enough space for the overlay of artificial product that you want to apply on the nail. This overlay, of course, strengthens and protects the natural nail. In order to protect the natural nail, you will need enough at the stress points on the sides of the nail. If the shape it is just a little bit too small, or it looks like the perfect size, and you need to apply any amount of pressure to make sure that it opens a little bit so that it covers from sidewall to sidewall, this means that the stress points will become too thin because there's a downward pressure on the natural nail pushing the product away. The natural nail sides are relatively sharp, so they could cut into the product, and that weakens the stress point of the nail. So the shape it has to fit like a glove, not a tight glove, but a good glove that you put on. It just needs to fit perfectly on that natural nail. And that means that sometimes you have to customize the shape it a little bit, making it a little bit more narrow. Sometimes you need a trick to make it a little bit more wide, all in order to maintain the proper structure and durability of the artificial product that you apply on the nail to strengthen and elongate the nail. Having said all this, you decided on the correct shape it, and now the first step. Yes, well, I have the shape it form, of course, and I have it right here. Well, normally, uh, your client is already part of your uh, work, of course, but now um, I'm going to do another step, because this tip I can prepare a little bit up front. And I'm going to fill this with the Builder Gel Clear. A thin layer. Like this, and I will hold it right here. You can, you can put your hand a little bit to the side, thank you. Like this, like this, yeah, a thin layer, and I'm going to completely fill the tip. Gently, of course, gently. A thin layer, really thin layer. <coughs> it's just a covering layer for the top of the nail. You have to know that you're working upside down. So that's important to tell. You have to think the nail the other way around than you normally make this nail. And that's important. So this step is the last step before I normally put on my top coat. Well, gently, 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 and I will cure. Like this. I will using the flash cure with clean and fresh batteries, of course which is really <laughs> handy to work with. Like this, like this, like this. So that's the first step in this way. And the second step will be another thin layer, but not completely till the end. So how long did you cure this first layer? I think because I have fresh, fresh batteries, like a second or 15. Okay, about 15 seconds. Of course, it's a clear product, so you don't need a longer cure. No, no. <coughs> I will turn it around. And what I want now is, it's hard to see a little bit for you, but I have a little bit of uncured product, the Builder Gel Clear, right here. And I will blend it out gently, but not completely till the end. Gently, gently, gently. And you have to sh uh, be sure that it's thin, because this part doesn't need any of this product. Because you're going to do a special effect with Ac this wet layer of gel. Exactly, exactly. 
like this. And it normally I can put the um, I can put the tip in a tip holder, but it was a little bit of improvisation today, and that's why I'm showing it showing it to you like this because it's also, of course, possible to just keep the form in your hand. Also nice to work with. So this layer will not be cured, but up front I already made a little mixture of well dish. What do you call it? Dishwasher foam, <laughs> and I have a little wooden jar, uh, wooden stick. I'm sorry, and I will take. I will show it on screen. That's nicer. I will take some bubbles, but not all too big. So some soap foam, foaming soap. Soap foam, yeah, indeed. And I will put it in the tip, not too less. Take enough. Just fill it up. But don't push, don't push it, just put it in there. Like this. So you have a great filled nail, as you can see. Very unusual. Very unusual, yeah. And you put it a little bit to the front, and now you can see it's completely filled with the foam. Yeah. Like this, which is very fun, because what we're going to do now is cure this. But I'm going to cure this so you can see what I'm curing, but I am going to put it into the LED because I want to have a fully cured nail. Yes, so now I'm going to put it in the LED. And the whole point of filling it now with the foam, with the bubbles, the soap bubbles, is that it will create a relief in the surface, in the inside of your shape it. I see a question from, uh, let me see, hand and nail treatment. Will you be selling a new small LED lamp for this system? Of course, we already have the flash gear, which is the tool that Deborah is using now. And we're working on a table held version of this flash gear. So just give us a couple of weeks and we will have an, a possibility for that. Um, of course, normally, Deborah, you are using a tip holder with a little print buddy where you apply the shape it upside down and we were looking to uh, if we were uh, if we could find that while you were doing your demo so that is why it was a little bit silent we couldn't find it but anywho you place it now inside the lamp in the twin light for a full cure which is with a transparent product 30 to 60 seconds yes indeed i did like uh, 30 seconds on, uh, somewhere around it and that's enough because absolutely clear product yes so that's enough and also the foam is very thin so it doesn't need too much of curing but it's still in there look and nothing has changed it's really great on its place and what i'm going to do now i will remove the foam with a dry nail wipe so be sure to not put on prep and wipe it has to be dry why does it have to be dry? Because otherwise I will remove the sticky layer of my builder gel, yeah. which I really am going to need for my next step. Okay, you, you need a residue of sticky layer, so you're cleaning it with a dry nail wipe. Yes. We already see the structure. Yes. It's almost like... Um, Look. Snake skin. Already like this. Already so cool. Yeah, that's super cool. I had a question of Gillian. If you want to pinch the nail, do you already need to pinch this clear application, very thin clear application, that you now already applied to the shape it, or would you pinch later on? I will pinch later on because there will be more gel products coming in. So and gel always will has the well the viscosity to get a little bit wider. So with the last product, I will pinch it. Of course, you can pinch every little step, but this is too thin and it doesn't stay on its place so we have to pinch it a little bit later if you want to pinch it but on Maria's nails this is quite enough pinching because otherwise the front of the nail will be too small for her fingers so let's not do that right now maybe later a bit but not too much but so uh, in the meaning you have to do it later not on this moment so that's the best Okay, thank you. So, we have a weird looking shape it. Yeah, yes. This is uh, the structure shape it. <laughs> and of course, we have this beautiful pigment, the unicorn gold, which I'm opening up right now and putting it right here. And also, we have our great, 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 great fluffy brush. 
The fluffy brush, okay. Yes. And I'm going to take some of the pigment on my fluffy brush, try to put it a little bit underneath, and I'm going to put it on my tip or in my tip and rub it over the bubbles. And don't be too careful, just put it on. Cool, that looks already just amazing. Like this. A little pressure, a little pressure. I will remove the jar and close it, of course. I put it down and I will show you how it already looks. Wow. So cool, huh? Yeah, that's you really cool. You can already uh, you uh, well use it like this. Just add some gel in there and work it like this. It's magical. It's really cool, yeah. Well, cure this step because we always have to be sure that the pigment stays on its place. Yeah, so you want to set the pigment. Yes. While you are curing this and make sure that the pigment is set, of course, it's also important to discuss the homework for this evening. What is the homework? Well, ha let's have a look at this. Create four shape it's, nails made with shape it's, with varied inlay on one hand. You can also create this, of course, as a sh in the shape it and then take it out of the shape it and then you will have your own created color pops. The length and shapes do not matter. Use at least four different inlay products or methods of inlay. So, four different variations of what you see tonight, either done on your own hand, the hand of a model, or of course, as I said, you can fill the shape it, then cure it, and then take it out as an example for your clients. And then you can put them in your salon together with a little price so that they know if I want this, this is the price that I need to pay for it. And for yourself, on the back of the card, the products that you used. That's a tip that Cyril gave a, couple of, uh, a little time ago in Business Talk, and it's really helpful. If you want to compete or if you want to apply with your homework, do your homework, you will have two weeks and the deadline is on the 15th of May. Upload your homework using the link that you can find in the album in the Facebook group called Shape It. If anything needs improvement, Jessica will contact you and we, you will get another chance to participate. And do not forget to submit your step-by-step -step photos. No more than four photos and one final photo showing all of your homework together. And I do want to punctuate this last one. It is important that you make your own nails that you do your homework and that the photos that you send us are also really made by you we had some uh, bad experience in the past so this is an important step make sure to send set, uh, step by step photos so that we can ensure that you are really uh, the proud creator of the nails that you have sent as homework if you do this, of course, you will get your e-certificate, the very first English Shape It certificate by Magnetic Nail Design. But you also may have a chance to win this amazing prize chosen by Deborah, that's the box of Shape It's of your choice, neon inlay, shell inlay and chameleon flakes, power gel clear, and of course the new green gel polishes that is um, Lucky green and lucky gl green glitter. And a little bit more about that just in a moment. So, now you know your homework. Four nails, two weeks. Make sure that it's your own work. And of course, you have a chance to win an amazing prize. Let's go back to you, Deborah, because of course you, you are ready for the next step. Yes, I am. Of course, I already prepared this part of the uh, shape it. And now we're going to create some colors. So, uh, let's take a look. I have a question of Simone. Did you apply the pigment, the unicorn pigment, only on the bubbling area and not on the flat part of the inside of the shape it? Yes, I already answered her indeed, but for the ones who didn't see it, yes, only on the bubbly area. So the flat part underneath is clear of pigment, so there's no pigment underneath, it's only on the bubbly area. So yes, indeed. So I have the paper palette right here. And I have some neon blush gel, blue. Put it on my paper palette. And make sure you don't take too less of the product. And I also have the blush dreamy. Put it next to it, like this. And now we are going to mix it up. 
because I want to create a lighter blue shade. And you, you can see that all these products are really easy to blend and mix with each other. So I have my tip right here. Put this a little bit to the side, but still you can see it right now. Turn it around. And now I'm going to take my Detailer 3, take some of the blue, now I will put it away, and put it into my tip over the bubbles. Please put it in the middle of the center, or the center. Over my bubbles. And do you want to um, level out the surface inside yeah. the shape, it so yes. make it smooth instead it of bubbly? Well, that's not really important, uh, because it will be smooth anyway, because this will not be the only product that will be in there. But of course you want to put it everywhere you want, so it has to be a, a little bit smoothened out, yes. And doesn't need to be very covering, but it has to fit the complete nail in the front. So you need to evenly distribute it distribute it, <laughs> distribute it <laughs> over the surface. Indeed. I'm just looking at the nail and thinking a lot of things by in my head. Don't you have to be careful that you won't work too thick to prevent under curing? Yes, but I will show you how thin it is. Because it's really thin. Yeah, and you also see the ridges of the um, bubbles sh shining through. So yes. that means that it cannot be very thick. No. But working thinly is very important when you work with the shape it, because under curing of any gel product, which can happen when it is applied too thick, and then you go in the light and it doesn't cure completely, doesn't cure properly, can lead to an allergic reaction. You always have to be careful not to overexpose yourself or your clients to not cured UV curing products like gels, blushes, uh, top gels, power gel. You have to be careful not to overexpose yourself or your client. This means that it's very important that you know how to work with the shape it and that you know what the risks are and what the challenges are of working with the shape it. So I always will recommend you to follow a training with one of the magnetic distributors and trainers to know exactly the do's and don'ts of the shape it with different and various types of products. Some products need to be applied very thinly, other products can be applied a little bit thicker, but in all cases it is important to never expose your client to not cured gel products. Safety, especially when working with uh, the shape it's, is very important and is something that is often overseen or neglected, especially when you look at, for instance, Insta Reels or videos of people using these shape it's and sometimes really almost exaggerating the amount of product that they're using to prove a point, but you never want to touch the living skin without reason. You have to prevent touching the skin of the client with not cured products. So that is why now the design is built up in various layers, making sure each layer is properly cured. We will also correct the nails from the underside to make sure that there's not an uh, uncured gel that touches the skin or the hyponychia of the natural nail unit. Uh, and it is important not to apply too much, especially at the moment of placement because the moment of placement is where you use the bulk of the not cured product and it gets in contact with the natural nail and possibly the skin. So be careful, prevent overexposure and prevent under curing. Let's go back to you, Deborah, because this was a whole talk. <laughs> yes, but a very important talk, so we listened very closely. So it was really important. In the meanwhile, I blended out the blue a little bit with my um, ombre brush, so if you can look at it, yes, as you can see I blended it out really gently, but to make it a bit softer, and I will flip it around so you can already see what is going on there. Beautiful, this is beautiful. Already, huh? Yeah. Already so cool. Well, this I have to cure for a minute because it's, uh, well, a very pigmented color. And of course, I mixed a white with a blue. So that has to go into the LED for like a minute. So I will do that right now. 
Yeah, while you are doing this, Daisy is asking, so the Shape It is already totally formed when ready, so when you will remove the Shape It, just some finish filing. Yes, Daisy, this is correct. However, Deborah now doesn't sh uh, place the Shape It right to the cuticle, but stays a little bit in front of the cuticle. So this means that there needs to be some blending done between the application of the Shape It and the application on the natural nail. But we will come to that just in a little bit. The 1st of May, May has already come, spring is in the air, today it was a lovely day here in the Netherlands, it was 26 degrees, it was amazing because last night like a liter of rain fell per square centimeter, it was a horrible evening, uh, thunder, rain, 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 and this morning we all woke up and it is almost summer here in Holland. But May is for me really the month of seduction. So this month, the product of the month is the seduction range of magnetic nail design. Seduction, beautiful manicuring products, totally natural, can be used on the hands, the feet, on the total body, and we have a complete line for you in which you can indulge yourself and your clients in the marvelous and mir miraculous world of seduction. Tonight, of course, we originally scheduled a seduction e-workshop together with Cheryl because she is our seduction babe within magnetic nail design. But Cheryl will probably come next week and join me. So we had to um, shuffle the e-workshops a little bit around. So let us, let's have a look at the current planning for the e-workshops. So tonight is Shape It together with Deborah. Next week, probably Cheryl, together with the seduction line of products. A week after that, Deborah will come back. Deborah is a mainstay here in Nail Talk Live, and she's going to join us entering the world of pigments and chromes. The week after that, Brenda, a Dutch trainer of magnetic nail design, will come to us and do Shape It Do's and Don'ts. So tips and tricks, but especially do's and don'ts, all the things that can go wrong with shape it's and how you can prevent that. And we will end the month of May together with Sabine from France, from Chartres. And Sabine will come to us not for a shape it class, but for a handmade to perfection modern almond nail with the signature that only Sabine can give to the beautiful nails that she makes. So a lot to do in the month of May and a lot of different inspiration, no, e-workshop and a lot of different views on working with products and that makes the e-workshops of Nail Talk Live so special and so intriguing every single time again and again. I think I've done, hosted hundreds of e-workshops and every time still I get home and I think to myself, oh I l would love to have the time to try this to play with this, to teach this, or to do this on my clients, and all with the magical products of magnetic nail design. We go back to Deborah for the next step, because the next step um, asks for a different color. That's correct, Papijn, indeed. Yes, so we're going to create a different color, which be, be will be a purple color, and we also are going to mix two colors together. So let's have a look. I will take my paper palette again, and I'm going to work again with the neon gel blue. Put it on my paper palette, like this. Uh, I'm going to create a bit more, because I also are, am going to use this color on the nail bed. And the second will be the Neon Blush Coral. And I'll put it next to this color. A little bit of the pink. Of course, you can always play with the intensity. Do you want it a little bit more pink? Use more of the coral. Do you want it a little bit more purplish? Then you have to use a bit more blue. So now I'm going to mix these two together. And you can see that already the purple color is going to be here. That's a nice purple. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. Like a little dark color purple, but a beautiful color next to that light blue, which will be awesome. Make sure it's really blended very well into each other, or mixed very well into each other, I mean, because otherwise you can get a little marbling effect, which is also nice, but not at this moment, because I want to create something else. So this is my purple color, as you already can see a little bit with the light, <coughs> with the light blue. This will be cool. So, I will take my Detailer 3 again, and I'm sorry, 
a little bit dry air. <coughs> Do Take you need something to drink? Do you have something to drink? I have it, and I have to cough a little bit. Okay. <coughs> well, Take something? that's no problem, of course, because I ha still have something to show <coughs> you. Isn't that amazing? It's like we totally prepared for this. Last weekend, Gillian, together with Syriza, Jessica, and of course Henriette, traveled from Denmark or from the Netherlands to Switzerland to join the Dobie team in Switzerland to do the very first magnetic event ever in Switzerland. Of course, they were joined by the team of Dobi, but also by the magnetic trainers in Switzerland. And we had a lot of guests, and it was an amazing experience for them. So let's have a look at how that went. So that was an amazing weekend, an amazing event with a lot of new people, new people that discovered magnetic nail design and started working with magnetic nail design. We already scheduled an, the, the next event in Switzerland and that will be on September 7th. And I will also go there because I have to see that all in re reality and just an amazing job. Also the Dean the team from Dobie, of course, you've seen Javi, Beatrice were there. Uh, all of them were there helping out and creating just the most amazing event of the month of uh, the end of the month of April. We have a lot of events in the month <laughs> of April. Anywho, how are you doing, Deborah? I'm fine. I'm so sorry. It was something I, I was like really swallowing myself. So I thought, oh my God, I have to stop a little bit talking now. But I'm fine. I <laughs> Finally, so let's have a look at what I'm doing right now. So I already continued a little bit with the purple, uh, but also in a very, very, very thin layer. And I'm going to blend it out again with my ombre brush. Downwards, it really thin. Really thin, but I want to have a thin cured layer right here this is like really transparent i will turn it around and blend it also out a little bit over the the blue color gently it's not really necessary to do it very much because you really don't see it when it's not that good blended so a little bit is just enough and then look already what is going on here cool nice right yeah super cool that's already so cool. I love the bubbling effect. Yeah, it's really awesome. Although I don't really like the small hole things. There's a name for it. But this is so cool. A little bit more of the purple. And this needs some curing time now. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to cure this. But we can continue with the nail bed. Magda is asking whether or not you can use purely gel polish for this ombre. Or does it have has to be gel? <coughs> of course you can do also gel polish, but gel is always a bit stronger, so you can work thinner. If you only work with the gel polish, it's always a bit softer, so not that uh, you don't have that much strength to work very thin, so you have to work with a thicker product to give strength to that nail. So that's a, of course a choice. Yes, you can work with gel polish, but then you have to work with a thicker product of a building gel to make that nail very strong. So yes. And of course. of course be careful because if you use a gel polish too thickly, which is too 
pigmentated. It will prevent the light from passing through the surface of the shape it to the natural nail. So if you want to apply with a m work with a more opaque color, make sure that it's applied super thin, even a little bit transparent, to make sure that the light and the curing of the nail will be sufficient and properly achieved. Yes. So I already told you we're going to continue with the nail plate. And I have her nail plate right here. So this is the moment where we're going to get started with our client. So if you want to do this at home, um, you can work until the step I just prepared at home before your client is coming and then we just continue with the set on her hand. So that's really easy for your client, she doesn't have to be there for like uh, the whole day or a couple of hours. I'm going to work with the rubber base, which I'm going to work with in a thin layer or this is not really the color I like. I think I'm going to work with the Builder Clear again. That's easy too. So let's work with the Builder Clear. And I'm going to take my brush. And the natural nail is of course prepped already. Yes. There was already bond applied to the surface of the natural nail. And now we're adding some Builder Clear, a thin layer. Like this. gentle and a thin layer that's for now it's enough and i'm curing this one for 10 seconds uh, that's really enough so putting it uh, in the led and i'm already having having some uh, little flakes which i put in a little jar because it was easier to take with me from the office because of course i did not have my own case with all my stuff but this was easy to take with me and yes here is my dear colleague's hand and let's continue a little bit to the center, yes, so perfect. Okay, and <coughs> on that first layer, a little thin, thin, thin layer. So uh, just to clarify, you already used bond prior to applying the clear build yes, gel. Yes, that already was. Yes, because you didn't show it, but uh, you already did this. Yes, in the moment when I was coughing and you showed the video, I already did it applying, applied it on there, so it's already underneath my building gel clear. So I have these flakes, and I'm going to get some stickiness from my builder clear. So this is an uncured layer. Yes. And you're using chameleon flakes. Of course. Which are very thin. Yep. And give a beautiful shimmer to the nail. They do. And they're so cool. And because I put them uh, in the sticky layer, or not in the sticky layer, in the uncured layer, I mean, I'm sorry, my parts are just easy to put in there and they stay really flat. Magda had a question, and I didn't understand that question exactly, but now do I do. Um, you said, of course, you want to, uh, you can prepare your shape it prior to the visit of your client, before the client comes into your salon. Um, how do you know which size shape it you would need? You have to do a measuring day. So up front, the um, what do you call it? appointment you have with your client to prepare your shape it's you have to do a, a fitting fitting day so when you have your clients for uh, like a refill appointment you file the nails very thin and you're going to fit your shape it for the next appointment so on this appointment she's just getting her regular based nails and after that one she's coming back for her really shaped it really cool appointment so you always have to do a fitting day that's important. And you can also do it like uh, maybe one day up front if you want, if you have the time. Then you say, you come today and tomorrow you have will be having great shape. It's on your nails. So make sure you do it before if you're going to work in longer shapes. Short shapes, of course, it's not necessary. But when you put in everything like I did last Monday, it's maybe easier to make a, a fitting day and then your client can just be at home and you can do it in your own time. But it is really great to do it. it's really an advantage so if if i would do it on my clients yes absolutely i would make a fitting day and do it up front and magda is completely right client consultation cards or client cards are super handy for this you fit and 
yeah, you fit and perhaps tailor the shape it's. So in, sometimes you need to alter the, sh the shape or for instance, the cuticle area of the shape it. You make little notes on your client card, which size for which finger. Also depends on the type or the shape of the shape it. Write that down so that you have that for your memory. The same as we used to do this with normal tips, of course, in the past. I always wrote down which tips went on which nail. So that <coughs> I knew that if a client called me and said, well, I broke my index finger on my right hand, that I knew which tip I could prepare before she came in. That doesn't always work perfectly because if the hypernychium breaks, of course, then the, the shape of the nail changes a little bit, but just as a general guideline. Thank you for that question, Magda. Let's go back to you. Yes, so I cured this layer and now I'm going to put another, uh, well, thin capping layer all on top of the flakes. So that's like only capping the flakes so they stay in this on their place. Really good. And as you can see, they're absolutely flat. So that's really great. And it's easy when you have your flesh cure, just cure it like this. I'm going a little bit on top, I'm sorry. And of course the question that we are always asked, that is all included in the price, Daisy is asking, and what price can be asked for a set of nails like this? Well Daisy, this really depends on where you are in Europe, which region, because in some countries, um, you can ask a little bit more. In other countries, the price has to be a little bit lower, depending on the economical situation of the specific country. Here in Holland, I would say for a set like this, 120 to 150 euros, Deborah? Yeah, I'm with you, Papine, because um, it's relatively easy to do, and if you have all five or all ten, you can do the steps like chuk, 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 chuk. That's quite easy, but still a work, of course. And you're going to add some product. So, yes, that's quite great price, uh, Papine. I am completely there with you, yes. Yeah, and of course, uh, Pernilla says that it's important that it all has to be... Uh, don't forget that your clients need to pay for the time that it takes you to create the nails. And that is also the duration of the treatment. Of course, Daisy, perhaps the application of the final nails will only take an hour to one and a half. Perhaps you will need another one and a half to two hours to prepare the nails. So more experience makes faster, make uh, faster makes you more money. So that is how it works. That's true. I was cleaning my glove a little bit because there was a bit of gel, and then when you touch your client, then that's not so good. So that's why I was I was cleaning. So um, the finger now has the really great flakes, and now I'm going to add a thin layer of my beautiful Perhaps purple. you can go a little bit more to the center of the camera like because it has a little tendency yeah, to be off focus. Blurry, I can see it, yeah. I'm going to work with that beautiful purple color in a thin, 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 thin layer. So the same mixture? Yeah. Put it on the nail, thin, as you can see, really thin. Blend it out. To the top and to the sides, like this. And again, I'm going to work with my ombre brush and blend it out gently. I'm wiping it off on a dry wipe. And again, so it just is a soft blend. Soft blend. You still can see the flakes. Yeah, it's beautiful. I like it already as it is. Right through. Just a beautiful natural nail treatment in a beautiful purple shade. <laughs> There's a little dusty there, which I'm going to remove like uh, this. Very easy. Bit to the side, maybe. And it's also easy with the ombre brush, because... But perhaps you can also go a little bit back to Again. the middle. Yeah, sorry. I was living in my own world, as you could see. And this I'm going to cure for one and a half minutes. Well, that gives me ample time to talk to you about the products that we launch worldwide, actually today, because it's the 1st of May and that needs a little bit of new inspiration. So we launched two new must-have colors and these are the Lucky Green and the Lucky Green Glitter. 
just beautiful green, dark green colors that are really reminiscent of high fashion green tones. So the high fashion couture brands carry certain colors of green and this is exactly that color. Perhaps a little bit wine bottle green, but then brighter, more lively, and it will totally give you all the luck in the world and bring a, sm a smile to everybody's face. Of course, a matching glitter, so it's a perfect must-have set where you can show both and your client can combine these on her nails. And I already saw that Sotirius from Bulgari made a beautiful video with this and a lot of our distributors also made beautiful content as well did our ambassadors. So check out all of their uh, content to see inspiration with these beautiful new colors. Available from your magnetic distributor of course. We also launched today a special product. It's a gel but in an ivory shade, a normal gel in an ivory color because we had a lot of requests, especially from the more southern countries, for ivory, 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 ivory colors. In the more southern countries, ivory is the must-have color in spring and especially in summer when the skin is nicely tanned and we are on a vacation to show off the beautiful um, contrast between the tanned skin and the beautiful ivory colored nails. You can also use this fiber gel, ivory, perfectly to extend the nail bed because also milky white nail beds in the reverse technique are super popular. As you can see, this is called fiber gel blush because we are now creating more and more fiber gels that fit the blush line perfectly. So this enables you, the nail technician, to create thinner and longer nails which are is totally in fashion, thin, longer nails, but in the look of the natural nail treatment, as your client probably knows from wearing blushes. We will also start to introduce more different shades of fiber gel, matching the different tones of blushes and creating a more hybrid system, but within the gel line of products. The big benefit of working with a fiber gel instead of working with a power gel, that a is that a fiber gel can be, be applied thinner and it shrinks during the curing process. So this makes a stronger but also a more slender nail which is thinner than a traditional power gel most often is. So be ready for the future and be ready with the fiber gels by Magnetic. And of course, as you know, Magnetic was the very first to create fiber gels. We made it 12 plus years ago fiber gels and created beautiful thin top secret gels that are just a must have in any nail studio, especially when you work with the shape it's because the result of the thinness and the strength of the fiber gel combined with the ease of the shape it makes everything easier. Talking about the shape it's of course we introduced six different shades, shapes, you see them here going from left to right the salon and the ballerina half tips. So these are like traditional tips and you can create an extension with these shape it's. And then we have the full tips, the element, modern element, classic square and the modern square. And these are full tips that you can either apply to the cuticle or like Deborah will do to halfway the nail. In the next month we will talk a lot about shape it's, we will do a lot of e-workshops. Our trainers and our distributors worldwide will offer you a lot of different classes where you can master the real technical skill of working with shape it's and to give your own signature to the nails that you make. Because we don't want to make the same nail for the rest of our life. We want to be artists that are able to take the natural nail of the client and beautify this. While you are beautifying this, your client may, may like to have a sip of tea or a sip of cappuccino. And that is why we also have now the tea glasses or the cappuccino glasses with 330 ml capacity sipping in style you can see it and these glasses are a total must in your studio when you serve a glass of tea or a nice uh, latte macchiato or a cappuccino available from magnetic nail design loyal loving leading even when you drink coffee or tea We'll go back to Deborah. I have, of course, Derma talk about the bone structure waiting for you, but we have to see and catch up with what Deborah is doing.
Yes, because uh, this nail, <coughs> of course, is very thin. I want to show you how to create it a little bit with more strength. So this is the step I want to show you. Of course, you can already prepare this also up front, but I wanted to wait until now because I want to show you. Let, let's have a look. So I have some power gel clear right here. And I also have my, my tip right here. So I'm adding a little bit into the shape it and I'm going to make it a bit strong can you put it yes thank you I'm going to make it a little bit stronger by filling this up until the bubbles stop that's the part where I'm stopping because this part I don't want it to be any thicker yeah. with power gel so you're giving structure and volume to the free edge of the nail exactly. am i correct yes you're absolutely correct um, which brush are you using <coughs> this is the ikebana brush well the best brush there is the best brush in the world yeah i can't live without it i think i use it um, for everything and why do you choose to use the ikebana brush well, it's a very thin br or small brush, as you can see. It's really easy for use into the shape is, as you can see, also into the smallest version of the modern element we have, because we just do like this, and it's just floating in there. It's so easy. And, uh, of course, it's all natural hair. Yeah. Handmade, perfect but for 3D designs, but also perfect to work with power gel. Absolutely. And the shape is, as you are showing us. Yes, it's just... And well. it's almost indestructible unless you cure it or leave acrylic in it. <laughs> yeah, but also when you leave acrylic in it, it's still fixable. Ah, uh, Camilla, you're saying that Ikebana is your favorite as well? M well, mine as well, the favorite, favorite brush. Yeah. Yes, well, we are at the point so we can uh, uh, put it onto the nail. So what I need for that is, of course, the beautiful shape it and a beautiful purple mix. So that's what I'm going to create now. I'm taking some of the purple mix and put it right in my shape it. And the whole nail or are you no. now focused on only that part where it touches the natural nail? Yes, well, and a little bit over the purple. <coughs> to intensify the color purple a little bit. And I didn't want to add too much before because I didn't want to cure too much. To make it too thick and the way to apply then is way harder. So like this. And we're just adding some in here. I will turn it around, as you can see. Oh, it cool. It's now fully covered. Cool. I don't know which area of the nail I prefer, whether, whether it's the free edge or the purple or the middle part where it's almost golden, unicorny white. They're all likable, huh? Like very much. <laughs> well, I think this will be enough. I and will. Is the mixture what you will use to apply and attach the shape to the natural nail, or are you going to use something else for this? No, this will be the attachment. Ah, the glue. The glue. As it were. Yeah. And from this part, as you can see, I will take it with my uh, spatula. You can see the edges are really pulling back a little bit. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. I'm waiting for that to happen because I don't want excess there or not too much excess. Of course, there's always a little bit, but not too much. So I'm waiting till it pulls back a little bit. And that's for me the moment and I can apply this form. Okay. So now we have the finger. Yeah. <coughs> and of oh, course... We have it on side shot. Then so I will put this away. Yeah, thank you. Of course, we already knew that her finger is... Uh, can you come a little bit to me there? Wait till it's sharp. Yeah. Going a bit downwards. So if I put the nail on... <laughs> my nail is also there. Upwards, then there will be a, a enormous gap right here. So this one has to go a little bit downwards. And that's why I'm putting this nail on halfway and I'm putting it a little bit to the back mm -hmm. making a little bit going downwards and my colleague is helping me wait 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 not yet not yet and can we see it from up front Gil as you can see it's all also in a very beautiful straight way 
and no excess in the cuticle area. It's all completely covered. And now is the moment to cure it up to on top. A little Let's bit from... Let's go to side shot. Yeah. Side, yes. And this fixates oh, oh and yeah. cures the product on the nail bed. Stop. So now this is enough, as you can see. There's a beautiful lower arch, which only needs a little bit of filing. And also from the center, on top, you can see, I um, will clean this a little bit. It's in a great straight line. But of course it needs some more curing. I'm going to check underneath. Yeah, but there's just barely product. Yeah, there's almost nothing. So if you think uh, the closing part, because her nail is going downwards, it's really easy fixable. So we're taking a little bit of the purple, like this. And we're going to add that part to make sure the nail and the shape it are touching each other. That it's closed. That it's closed, yes. Because you do not want the gap. And because it's a very thin and easy product, it's And of really course, you're not touching the hypernychium. No. You're not touching the skin. You're using the uh, detailer number three to apply it very thinly, yes. very evenly, just to make sure that it's all smooth and that there's no gap between the natural nail and the tip. No, and that's why I left a little bit of her own nail onto her uh, finger, because then I am sure that I will not touch the skin. As you can see it like this, you can see there's no touching of the skin at all. When you're happy and it's completely closed, because that's important, you can cure this for one and a half minutes. Make sure you do it, because also your power gel, which is in the top right here, needs some extra curing. Okay, thank you. Well, one and a half mi minutes, give me some time. I also have some questions. Uh, Ashley, you're asking, can you use, or your question is, how can you cure it when you're alone, or when you are alone? Well, it depends on the type of product that you use to adhere the tip on the nail surface. Now, of course, it's blush and it's very thin, but if you use a power gel or a fiber gel, you can actually apply the tip to your finger and then take the light and cure it, because it actually s keeps it in place. We are working on a different table light, and um, that will be there shortly. You can also hang your flash cure, of course, from your table light. That's also a trick that I've seen. But if you use a more viscous product like fiber gel or power gel or standard builder gel, then that gives you enough solid solidity to keep the tip in its place. I saw another question from uh, Gemma about the Ikebana. If you, um, if, you are do if you want to use an Ikebana, or I believe this question was actually from Stephanie, if you want to have an Ikebana and you want to use it with various products, like acrylic, power gel, can you use it for both products, or would you need separate brushes for the various products? Well, the last thing is best, and what I strongly recommend, use a special Ikebana for your 3D acrylic work and another for your power gel work, because and you cannot really remove the residue from either product before you go to the next product without probably damaging the hair of your Ikebana brush. And that is something you absolutely don't want to do. I already promised you a Derma Talk with Wendy, and today it's about bones. What kind of bones do you imagine? Hi, and welcome to Derma Talk. This time we are going to talk to you about the bones inside of our hands. Because if we do not have any bones, we cannot use our hands and our hand would look very, very different. And we do have a lot of different kind of bones inside of our hands. Let's look at it uh, up front. Let's start with the carpal bones. These are the bones from our wrist. As you can see, there are a lot of bones. Our wrist exists of 13 little bones. The carpal bones are eight of them, uh, and they're all like puzzled together. Uh, and you can see nine different nouns over here. <laughs> uh, but this one, this hamate, uh, has like a hook, a uh, hemulus uh, on, um, on side of it. So these eight type of bones 
uh, make sure that our wrist is really tough but also very flexible and we can uh, use it and roll around our uh, wrist so uh, really good yeah really clever of our body to do it like this so these are the eight bones and they are together with the metal metacarpal bones which are on the inside of our hands so we do not have like this big hand bone no these are just like five bones metacarpal bones and this uh, because we have this we can um, really flex and yeah have flexibility and uh, movement inside of our hands because if this would be like one bone we would be like, be like a lego uh, a, a lego man uh, and we could not use our hands uh, this way um, so these metacarpals they run all the way to the base of your uh, of your hand and then we have the phalanges and the phalanges are yeah we have inside of our fingers and as you can see we have a proximal version a middle version and a distal version three types of phalanges making sure that we have yeah we have uh, movement inside our fingers and we can bend them um, only one way <laughs> not the other way um, giving us yeah a lot of movement again in our hand what is really important to point out is that our thumb only has a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx so it does not have a medial phalanx this means our thumb is not as easy to move as our other fingers and what is also really cool to know um, is not on this sheet but it's really cool to know is that the uh, vessels from your uh, the, um, from your finger run on the sides and with your fingers you have two running on the sides and with your thumb you also only have one running through the middle so your thumb is actually very different than your other fingers so good to know when you're doing a massage and you are moving like the fingers this will be much better and the thumb will not be as uh, loosened and this is also why us nail techs always yeah get in an argument with our clients like remove and yeah let your thumb be <laughs> uh, work with me your thumb is always uh, stubborn when we do uh, nails so this is actually an anatomical reason for it great uh, information and you know what while we were looking at this we went like is looking at what we can do with our various thumbs and if we can do this or which we can do that but that is because you just get full of ideas when you listen to wendy um before we went to wendy i saw that some of you asked did the hand of the model of maria go in the light like this or like this and unfortunately i cannot read and talk and look at you at the same time i'm only a man i know we are not sufficient but anywho um maria first went into the light like this and then turned the hand like this to ensure complete proper cure so very good question i had to check because i was busy with my thumbs but thank you for that question um yeah Let's go back to Deborah. Yes, indeed. We were making very strange thumb and hand movements, but it was really funny. And we are at the point to remove the shape it. So let's have a look, because this is a really cool moment. <coughs> oh. yeah. Here it is. It looks beautiful. Already, Deborah. huh? It is really, really cool. Well, I'm going to remove it very gently with the expert pinching tool, which is a very cool and very needful precision tool and of course you have to be gentle you already heard it, heard it click that's really cool sound and sometimes a little bit scary when you do yeah, it for the first I time i find this super scary but i find the pinching tool for expert especially scary because i really i'm i'm like my mustaches are uh, almost curling in a different direction now <laughs> because i just but in proper hands of a well-trained nail technician that knows what she's doing she knows what she's doing if you do not know what you're doing don't do it 
Don't do it. But no. that's a good general li guideline for life. Then we always say, don't try this at home. Here it comes. Here it is. It's already coming loose. I have to be, of course, careful. But I know because I already added, I saw it coming. And uh, yes, I already added some power gel clear, of course. And here we go. Yes. That's why I know it's stronger. Still a bit of the front. And here we go. Oh, let's go to the side shot, Gil. Oh, I love the high shine effect. Yeah, already, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, love it, love it, love it. And a very soft and thin layer, which only needs a little bit of, well, actually shaping. And that's just enough to make it very beautiful. I like this. And <laughs> people, I can already see people laugh when me they remove it. Yes, me too. And now I'm going to use my e-file gently, of course. Well, we s I know, I know Naomi, you say we can breathe now. Yes, I agree with you. you I was can. holding, I was almost peeing my pants, or <laughs> I was watching Pirates of Penzance. 120 nail tags holding their breath, Cindy. <laughs> yes, you're right. Love the pop when you remove the form. Well, Joyce, I remember a pop when Natalia pinched the nail that I made. That was a different pop. It was <laughs> almost cracking me up. Yes. I love the nail, Joanna says. Uh, Gemma and also Magda is uh, asking, do you always use the pinching tool to remove the shape it, or can you also remove it without? Uh, with the longer forms, I would um, s recommend to do it first step with the pinching tool and then after with your hand, of course. Uh, with the shorter versions, it's easier to do it by hand uh, because you don't need a big tool. But with the modern element, I have to say, it's really better to do it with the pinching tool because that shape is really holding your product in shape. So that's really difficult to do it by hand and you have to really squeeze and that's something you don't want to do. And with the pinching tool, you just do and then it clicks off. So that's better. But for the short ones, no, of course, by hand is also very uh, possible to do. So I was already telling you, I'm just shaping the little... What is the RPM that you're using at the moment? Sylvia is asking I am on, well, I think 20,000. Around well, no, 20,000. Less, 15,000, I think. 15 to 20,000. Yeah. And Karin is asking, who's your model? Well, your model is, of course, Maria. Yes, my dear colleague. And we are going to do some shaping. And Joanna is asking, which e-file bit did you use? And does it have to be this one or maybe an XXL bit you could also use? Well, you should use a bit that you're comfortable with. Exactly that, yes. Because you don't want to uh, go too hard because it's really thin layer. And if you go too hard or pr press too hard or have a too rough bit, you go completely through the nail. And that's something we don't want. So... It's just a little bit soft shaping, and that's just it. And the rest you will do by hand or with your uh, white block, if you prefer. Yeah, and you're using a 180 grit file? 180, yes, absolutely. And uh, perhaps Maria can help you to stay in the middle of the screen. Yes, <coughs> thank you. And it's important that you uh, make sure that you... Stabilize the nail sti while filing. Exactly. Because we do need... If you do it like this, we can't. If we do it like this, we can't. But we have to give some pressure on the other side because that's something important. Let's check the lower arch. Can we see it from the side? Well, while we are focusing, Maria, Karin is sending you love. Uh. And thank you for being here. <laughs> Geneva would like to see more, the bulling or the curve of the nail, the apex of the nail. Well, here and we it can is. see that on this photo, Geneva, you can see the apex is still on the nail bed in the middle of the stress point. And now the lower arch lines are corrected because they had a little tendency to droop a little bit. And we are just correcting that using the hand file. You need to do this with the hand file. You cannot do this with an electric file, or at least I cannot do this with an electric file. No, but the nails are also very thin. When you do it with an e-file, it will go through your nail well quite fast. So, And this is to be more controlled. Do it by the hand file. Uh, hand and nail treatments is asking, could you use the thin spatula to push up the shape? It's yes, you can also use that. But be careful that you don't use it when the uh, nail is super thin, as you will push it 
between the nail and the shape it. And if the nail is too thin, it may crack. So it's best just to gently squeeze it until it lets go. And let's be honest, this length is, of course, super long. It's like humongous. Um, most clients in nail studio prefer to wear a little bit shorter, let's say about three centimeters shorter nails. Um, this is, of course, super cool for us nail technicians and great to work on your own nails and to show everybody that you are an amazing nail tech, able to make amazing nails. But in the nail studio, the nail salon, it's the shorter, more natural nails that is actually what is making our turnover, which makes our job a successful job. These extreme nails are mostly for the nail technicians, and that is also why we're showing you this, because this show is for nail technicians. And we love extreme nails, and I think we all tried long nails once. I did, and that once went on for like 10 years, but now I'm more into the natural nail treatment, which can also be corrected and defined using shape it. But for that, other trainers will come and show you. I will go back just shortly to Deborah, because how are you doing? I am very great, uh, Pepijn, actually. I was uh, just checking the sides, and as you can see, I didn't touch the, the top with my file. That's the only thing I'm going to use with my white block. Uh, gently because it's also on the top very thin. But if, as you know already, I applied two layers of the building gel clear, so it is quite strong, but still you do not want to go through the surface because you will lose, of course, your beautiful design. So gently, with your white block, so you have the control, do not use your e-file. Okay, while you are doing this finishing, I know you know how to work with the white block. Always use rounded motions like we all learned from May. Rounded motions to prevent any flat areas in the nail and the nail will be just perfect. Let me go, I saw a question. Um, can this be done? Chuk, 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 chuk. Where can you do this only using the blushes? Well, you have to be careful, Sylvia, and all of you thinking this at home, that the blushes should not be applied too thick because then you cannot cure them properly. So when you want to use only brush blushes, make sure you either use the blush blends, which are more transparent, or work in a couple of layers to prevent under curing. You don't want to have the cheese souffle effect in between layers while your client is wearing this, because during the fill, it can run out and it can touch the skin of the clients. And as I said, you never want to touch the skin of the, your clients with undercured or not cured products. I see a question of Vera. Pepijn, when I uh, would use acrylic with the shape it's, will there be any curing issues because of the shape it's? Thank you. Vera, no. That is not the case. Thank you for joining us. If you want to use shape it's with acrylic, that's actually how shape it's were introduced 25 years ago, just at the beginning of my career as a nail tech. Uh, it is important to realize that acrylic cures in layers or per application. So it is better then to first do your shape in the shape it, so the length and the, sh and the shape, then apply a second bead of acrylic to create the proper structure and then a third bead of acrylic, and you have to wait in between, and then the third one to apply the shape, it, clean it underneath, then let it cure, hold it in place until it's set, let it cure for three to five minutes, remove it, and you have a perfect acrylic nail. But also, this will be shown on Nail Talk Live, because Nail Talk Live is all about showing you every little thing that we know and we can think of, because the language of nails is a language to be loved. Just like the workshop of two weeks ago. Jessica was here and Deborah took care of my place here at the presentation desk. And Jessica had homework. Well, just looking at Jessica is already a joy. But making the homework for Jessica makes this joy just a reality. Make two different sets of five nails each where you use a minimum of two different top shells. And one of these top shells has to be a part of the nail art. Well... We have winners, and just let me check, 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 check. Oh, thank you, Gillian. He knows what I'm checking, and I'm going to check this. Of this first winner, Jessica says, of course, I've already had a glimpse of this design at Dobie, stars in her eyes. And looking at it now, I think it's even more beautiful. But then again, I love dragons. 
it's so nice to receive the technique that I have shown back even more extensively. Congratulations from Switzerland, Tanja Mullis. Congratulations, I see that you're watching this. So congratulations, Tanya, I see you now. I look at your comments. Congratulations with your beautiful homework, this amazing dragon that brings good luck and fortune. Thank you for joining and doing your homework. The next one is from a different country. It's actually Armenia. And the feedback is, oh my God, totally in love. I'm afraid of snakes, but this way I would be a fan to be able to wear these nails. Just look at that amazing 3D snake, beautifully done by, congratulations, Alvar Tulumbayan. Alvar Tulumbayan, congratulations from Armenia. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I see the snake. I love snakes in jewels. I love snakes in ornaments. Beautifully done. You can be proud of yourself. But the same goes for the third winner of this evening. All the way from Germany. Well, Germany is a little bit closer than both Switzerland and also Armenia. But still, it's not Holland. It's Germany. Ooh. I tried to do it Jessica style. Eh? Ooh. I adore the blue leopard print version. That's a cool idea. And that painted dragon eye makes those pigment designs even shine more. I'm happy to see that I have and could inspire you. Congratulations from Germany, Evi Muck. From Germany, congratulations, Evi, with your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful designs. Well, I love the blue ones as well. They're just absolutely breathtaking, Evi. Congratulations, all three of you from Switzerland, from Armenia, and from Germany, but also congratulations to everybody that received their e-certificate. And thank you for joining, participating, doing your homework, and just inspire us to inspire you. Thank you. I know, Gillian, he tells me in my ear that we still have the prize, because all three of you will receive this amazing prize from Magnetic Nail Design, cuticle oil, the peach cuticle oil, Sparkle Chrome, Unicorn Pigment, Cat Eye Silver Top Gel, Flex and Shine, Base and Top, Extreme Mud, and the winner takes it all, Supreme Finish. Of course, the best top gel in the world. Without Supreme Finish, you cannot do nails. Really, the best, 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 best top gel in the world. Uh, I have to look at my notes now. Let me, let me make some markings. Chuk, 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 chuk. Okay, well. I think I don't hear a file anymore. Do I, Deborah, or do I? No, I'm only fine-tuning, but I can keep fine-tuning whole day. So sometimes you have to say to yourself, stop fine-tuning, because otherwise you have nothing to fine-tune anymore later. So I'm stopping doing that right now. So um, are you ready for that last moment, uh, Papine? Yeah, because you simply can't finish without Supreme Finish. No. Thank you, Gillian. And that's why we have this beautiful Supreme Finish. And, <coughs> well, let's put it onto the nail. At first, getting some near the cuticle area. And taking a bit more, because it's a long nail. And I'm pulling it downwards. Ah, yes, Top Shot. Yeah, but now I love Top Shot. Yeah. And now I want Side Shot. Oh. I will do it like this then. It's amazing, those bubbles. Cool, right? I've seen that, but I never knew how to do that. I thought it were like bullions or, or, or air bubbles that you blow into a wet gel, but this is just amazing. Yeah. Super simple and super effective. It's really cool, right? It's, it well... I s I'm, I'm at a loss for words. More than cool. And of course, uh, don't forget to remove the sticky layer underneath the nail. I already did that, of course. But don't forget to remove the sticky layer of the gel that's underneath. Um, if you have a transparent design, add some Supreme Finish underneath. But because this is not a transparent design, I removed the sticky layer before I put on my top gel. Well, we're almost at the end of this evening, evening, so cure that nail, please, Deborah, for our final screenshot moment, the moment we've all been waiting for. As, of course, Gillian already said in my ear and I to you, you can never finish without Supreme Finish. I'm going to have that 
put on a little tile in Delft Blue and hang it next to my desk, that Gillian with all his brilliant one-liners have to finish this. Okay, so if you want to participate this evening into this e with this e-workshop, then your homework assignment is create four shape hits using varied inlay on one hand. You can also use four shape hits to create nails and just plop them out and put them on a little background. The length and also the shape of the nail does not matter. Use at least four different types of inlay products. So four nails, well, that's doable because you see it's just a joy. It's so amazingly fun to do. You have two weeks to do your um, homework and upload this through the link that you can find in the album Shape It. If anything needs improvement, Jessica will contact you and you will get another chance to participate. But to make sure that it's really you that creates these nails, make step-by-step -step photos. And Jessica asked in the comments, please also put the products that you're using in the background of the photo so that we know that you are the author of those nails. You can also participate if you are not working with magnetic nail design, of course. There's no difference between working with magnetic nail design or not working with magnetic nail design. Well, the only difference is that if you work with magnetic nail design, then you've chosen the best. And if you're not working with magnetic nail design, then you are still open for possibilities. But in either case, creating your homework is a technical challenge and we are all about technical nails and giving you technical feedback and, and theoretical information that you need to be more successful, even if you choose a different path. Well, if you do that, of course, you will get your e-certificate to prove to your clients that you are able to create beautiful shape it's like our shape it's queen, but you also have a chance to win this prize. A box shape it of your choice, so you can choose which ones. Lucky green gel polish and lucky green glitter gel polish. Green, the color of luxury, as I think Sartirius added in the comments. Neon inlays, shell inlays and chameleon flakes. And top it all off with a jar of power gel clear. Well, if this is not a prize that you want to have, then I don't know anymore. Deborah, how far is the nail? Well, the nail is completely finished. So where do you want to start with from Papine? From the top or from the side? I think from the top. The top. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Love the bubbles, love the bubbles, love the bubbles. As you can see, how shiny, how shiny. Yeah, I would like to see the underneath, actually. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. It's a bit dust there, but well, it's not so much. No, but I would also like to see the C curve. Yeah, then I will remove some. No, to the center, yes. There, there, there. <laughs> and then we are flipping it upwards a little bit, like no further to me. Yes. A little bit more. Thank you. Uh, a perfect deep C curve. Love the deep C curve. I love the convex. I love the concave. And very thin. And super thin. And now back to the top shot. And for the screenshot, we will use side shot. <laughs> Just angle it perfectly, find your spot. Like this, like this, like this. Okay. Uh, relax and just angle a it bit. down a little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Turn it a little bit to the camera. A little camera. bit more like this. Relax yeah. a bit. Yeah, thank you. It's difficult to relax when there's a photo moment of your nails. But we will go there anyhow because it's almost 9.30. Well, it's already past 9.30. Three, two, one. Screenshot! Perfect. Perfect. I feel like Ariel in The Little Mermaid. <laughs> I do. I do. Deborah, thank you for showing this beautiful nail. I give the floor to you. Yes, well, thank you, of course, all for watching in this little bit uh, different show than you were thinking of that was coming tonight. But I'm very happy that you uh, happy that you all watched it, and I was really lucky to make this beautiful mermaid nail. I hope you are going to create some similar things or beautiful other things. I really can't wait to see everything. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye. I also want to thank you for watching us this evening. Don't forget, the month of May is the month of seduction, the most luxurious, perfect, natural manicuring, pedicuring line of magnetic nail design. And 
Cyril will definitely come here to do an e-workshop with me for you using these beautiful products. But for this evening, we introduce you to the Shape It and to the miraculous world of Deborah. Thank you for joining us and watching us this evening. Thank you, Gillian, for helping us in the back and sending all of your messages to me, helping me out. Thank you, Deborah. De Deborah. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> and a special thanks to our model, Maria. So, and of course, Thank you for being here. See you soon. See you at Nil Talk Live.